everybody, I'm Samurai Sam, and today I'm going to look at all of my loose Game Boy Advance games. So here we go, there's a lot to get through, let's get started. Here's Astro Boy the Omega Factor. This was made, I want to say this was made by Treasure, although Sega's on the front, so I don't know if Treasure made it and Sega published it, or if it's just Sega and I'm remembering wrong. But um, supposedly this is a really good game, really good licensed game. Uh, I just haven't really sat down to spend time with it yet. I got, I got it when uh, GameStop was kind of liquidating... They're GBA games, I believe. Uh, this is a little out of alphabetical order for some reason, but like um, here I have Advance Wars 1, so I talked about Advance Wars 2 in the last video. Uh, Advance Wars is fantastic strategy RPG. No, no, they're not RPGs. They're just strategy games pretty much. Um, very good, uh, cartoony and like um, accessible and deep. Uh, but um, that being said, the first one is a little bit obsolete now. Uh, like the second game has basically everything you would ask for from the first game and more. So, it's, I mean, it's still kind of worth going back to if you just want to see the origins of the series, and, and, like, it's a little more simple than the second one, but it's, like, there's not, like, a great deal of reason to play the first one anymore. Um, Backyard Baseball, so in, Bassport, more specifically, Backyard Baseball 2006. Um, so, at Retro World Expo 2015, I bought five mystery Game Boy Advance games for a dollar each, and this was one of them. They were just completely random games. Um, and yeah, that's the only reason I have this. I do like baseball games. I don't think this one is anything special, but yeah, I have it. I, I might get rid of it though. And here is another one of those five games. It's Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. This was like the nicest pull from the, the lot I had. Um, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance was, um, better known for, for the game that was on PS2 and then ported to GameCube and Xbox, um, like live action. Um, I already talked about it, I believe in the PS2 episode, but, um, live action, live action, I said, like. It's, it's an action game with, like, some RPG elements, kind of, like... It's, like, I think it's canonically part of the D&D universe. And this version, I don't think it's, like, a straight port of the original... The, like, the, the console game. I think it's different. I don't know. I might wind up selling that one. I don't know if I'll actually play it. Here's, uh... Banjo-Kazooie Grunty's Revenge. Um, kind of one of the lesser-known Banjo games. Uh, and I haven't really played it too much. Apparently, it's decent. I got it for nice and cheap. Um, so yeah, at some point I'll probably give it a try. I think it's supposedly like good, but really short or something along those lines. Um, here is, uh, Castlevania, uh, Circle of the Moon. The reason why the label's ripped, I believe, is because I bought it used at GameStop way back in the day, and they used to put the price stickers right on the label, so this, the labels of the games would tear really easily, sadly. But anyway, um, this was a launch title for the GBA and a pretty good one, uh, but one problem was that the original GBA didn't have a backlight, and this game was pretty dark, so you really needed to have, like, a, a light of some kind to really, like, enjoy this game on the original Game Boy Advance. But anyway, I played this years ago. This was, I think this was, like, maybe my first, or probably my second Castlevania. I think Symphony of the Night was technically my first one that, like, I played all the way through. I, I don't even remember. I don't even think I played Symphony of the Night all the way through right away. I played a lot of it. Or whatever. But anyway, I'm rambling. Um, this game is good. I remember it being really hard. Um, I know, like, you have to, like, rely on getting drops, certain drops from enemies, because, like, there's a card system in this game. Enemies will drop these cards, which you get, and you have them permanently, and you can use, combine two cards to cast spells and stuff. Um, but, like, a good game, like, not, like, a perfect Castlevania, not one of, like, one of the best Castlevanias, but a good Castlevania. Here is... Um... Choo Choo Rocket. This is basically a port of the Dreamcast game of the same name. Um, and in my opinion, like, I mean, I guess it's okay, but like the Dreamcast version is just so much better. Like, why would you ever play this? Um, yeah, I guess that's all I'm going to say about it. I mean, just imagine it with the GBA's controls, like not having enough face buttons, like it just doesn't go nearly as well as the Dreamcast version. Uh, here we have Crash Bandicoot Entranced, which again, I got, I got it for dirt cheap. Like I, I was lucky to find like a couple, um, stores, uh, in my area that were just selling Game Boy Advance games for, like, dirt cheap. So, like, anything that looked remotely interesting, I picked it up. Um, and uh, Crash Nitro Kart here. I tend to forget that I even have this, but, um, yeah, I actually don't have the console version of Crash Nitro Kart. And maybe I should maybe I should fix that. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how good the GBA one is because I haven't really played it yet. Uh, here is another one of those mystery games that I got, Danty, Danny Phantom. The Ultimate Enemy. I never even watched the TV show. Honestly, I don't know why I haven't gotten rid of this yet. Like, I'm not going to play that. Um, we got here... What's this? Oh, here's a good one right here. 
Uh, although, I mean, I haven't really played this one yet, but this is Dragon Ball Advance Adventure, and apparently this is one of the best Dragon Ball games, like, just period. Um, like, really good, like, side-scrolling action beat-em-up kind of gameplay. And, like, even if you don't like Dragon Ball, this game is uh, enjoyable from what I hear. I do intend to find out for myself, but that day has not come yet. Here is um, Dragon Ball Z Collectible Card Game. Um, I did actually play the card, the actual trading card game of Dragon Ball Z a little bit, just only by myself. Like, I had my own, like, two decks of cards. So I tried playing the game. I'm like, yeah, this seems pretty cool. So I grabbed this one. I found it for, like, almost literally nothing. And, yeah, I have enjoyed card video games in the past, so... I'll give that one a shot at some point and see if it's a decent rendition. Uh, here is F Zero Maximum Velocity. I alluded to this in a previous video. The, the previous video. Um, this was a launch title, and I really like F Zero, but this is my least favorite one in the whole series by a mile. And, and the controls just don't, don't feel right. Like it's really awkward to turn in this game, and to me that just makes it hard to play and just not that fun. Um, but like one thing that's interesting is that it's actually take, it actually takes place like in the future, like, like future of the F-Zero universe. So like you're playing as like Captain Falcon's like grandson or something weird like that, or like, you know, other characters that, that otherwise you never see anywhere else. Uh, I guess there's a reason you never saw them again. Uh, Finding Nemo, this was another one of those mystery games, I believe. I think this is the last one. Uh, and yeah, it seems like a perfectly okay licensed game. Like if you had a kid who was into the movie back in the day, but again, I should probably just get rid of that one because it's just taking up space and I'm not going to play it. I like the movie though. Finding Nemo is a really good movie. I actually watched it recently. I watched it in Spanish because I'm learning Spanish. Uh, here is Game & Watch Gallery 4. Um, Game & Watch Galleries are really cool. They're like compilations of the Game & Watch titles, which are like little high score, um, games, um, I should probably just do, like, one video showing off the three Game & Watches that I have, but anyway, re you know, the really old, like, kind of like the Tiger LCDs, but they're higher quality, um, uh, but basically, you go for high scores, and it gets harder and harder the more you play, and, like, they're, this, these Game & Watch galleries compilations also have, like, modernized versions of the games with Mario characters, which is pretty cool, and that's, like, probably the best one I want to say Game & Watch Gallery for. I haven't played it a lot, but, you know, i played it enough to know it's good. Gradius Galaxies was one of the worst labels you've ever seen. Um, this is a pretty good ga great Gradius game that is exclusive to the GBA. And I don't have too much else to say about it other than, yeah, it's Gradius. And if you like Gradius, you probably like this. There you go. Uh, I would recommend playing that one like on like a Game Boy Player because you really want to be able to see all the bullets well. But yeah, you should be able to find some way to do that. Uh, Gunstar Heroes. Gunstar Superheroes, I'm sorry. I... This is another one I tend to forget that I have, but yeah, a sequel to the much-beloved uh, Genesis game, Gunstar Heroes, uh, made by Treasure, and yeah, I really should check it out sometime. I have not yet. Uh, ooh, this is a good game right here, even though I haven't played it very much. I believe the way you pronounce this is Guru Logic Champ. I forget if it's Guru or Guri. I don't exactly remember the hiragana right off the top of my head, but because um, like, you know, I could read katakana symbols, but I, at one point I memorized hiragana, but like, I forgot because I didn't, like, practice enough. But anyway, it's like Guru Logic Champ or Guru Logic Champ. And this is one of those puzzle-solving games. It's by Compile. That's kind of neat. Um, it's one of those puzzle-solving games where, like, I think this one involves, like, rotating the screen and, like, placing these creatures. Like, you see there's, like, a duck kind of looking creature there. Um, but, yeah, it's, like, something to do with solving puzzles, and it's really good. If you like logic-based puzzle solvers, that's one to import for sure. Yeah, here is a... Uh couple games here that kind of go together. Here's uh, Irid Iridian 2 and Iridian 3D. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But um, these games are shoot 'em ups uh, Iridian 3D is more of like kind of a from behind, like kind of like Space Harrier, that kind of shoot 'em up like Star Fox a little bit. And Iridian 2 is more of your traditional shoot 'em up But they both kind of have 3D-ish graphics on the GBA. I do know that Iridian 3D is not considered a very good game, but Iridian 2 is considered good, so I'll give it a shot sometime. I'll probably get rid of Iridian 3D because I know it's just not very good. Um, Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. This is a remake of Kirby's Adventure for the NES. I think this version is not as good um, in most part because, I mean, the original game, I think the difficulty was just about right, and this one they made it easier. Um, and, yeah, it was just too easy in my opinion. Although, granted, there is, like, a higher difficulty mode after you beat the game, and I haven't played through all that one yet. But I think it's basically the same thing. You just have fewer HP, so I don't know how just how much, how good that really is. Um, I mean, it's still a perfectly good game all on its own, and it's obviously got nicer graphics and stuff. But um, I prefer the original.
Legitimately, not even for nostalgia. I just think it's better. Here is Klonoa Empire of Dreams. Uh, it seem, I haven't really played this one much, but it seems like a perfectly faithful Klonoa game. So if you enjoy one of the other Klonoa games, chances are you'll enjoy that one too. Um, here's... Uh, Konami Collectors Series Arcade Advanced, and I'm going to be honest, I forgot what's on here. Like, you're talking about, like, old 80s Konami arcade games, and I think there's, like, six of them or something like that. Not, like, too, too many, but, you know, I found this for cheap, and I just had to have it, so that's why it's in my collection. I'll spend some time with it at some point. Uh, what's next? One thing I don't like about GBA games is because they have this lip here, like, see... The cartridge like is not like perfectly flat. There's like a lip. It kind of makes it annoying to store a bunch of them because like they don't line up that well, and you can't like stack them. Here is Mario Party Advance, and this label is in terrible shape because I got this game for free. Like somebody at my family's furniture business just found it, and we're like, "Hey, Sam, you like video games? Um, do you want this?" And I'm like, "Sure." Um, yeah, this is a Mario Party game on Game Boy Advance, which is kind of interesting because like. Playing multiplayer on Game Boy Advance is kind of inconvenient because you need, like, four systems and, like, two link cables at least or something like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, it's Mario Party. You know, I would be interested in trying it, but I don't know if I'll ever get enough people together to do it. And I actually forgot I have a GBA cartridge that's lying over here because I just played it today. And that game is Mario Golf Advance Tour. This is uh, kind of an unusual game and not really what you would expect. Um... But much like Mario Golf on Game Boy Color, um, like this is made by Camelot, and this is much more of like an RPG golf game where like you gain experience points and you level up and stuff. And really, there's not much Mario in this game. Like, there's hardly any elements of the Mario universe, let alone the characters themselves. Um, and really, you could call this Golden Sun Golf because it has a lot of the same like graphics and audio and you know just features of Golden Sun in it. So really kind of an odd game, but it's a really good game. Like uh you can really sink your teeth into that game and like um really like the game provides a lot of resources for like really mastering the mechanics and there's a lot to do in the game and like different modes and so yeah if you like golf games that is definitely one you should try out. And this is Mario Tennis Power Tour. This is much the same vein as the previous game. Although, um, one difference between this one, like, again, yeah, it's, it's a lot like Mario Golf, which I was just describing. Like, it's kind of rpg issue level up and stuff, uh, and it has kind of that as same aesthetic. Uh, but one thing that's disappointing about this one is that this one apparently has no connectivity with the Mario Tennis on GameCube, whereas Mario Golf does. I don't know why that's the case, but apparently that's true. Uh, here is Mega Man Battle Network 6, uh, Psybeast Gregar. Uh, that's because there's two versions of this game, and they, I guess it's kind of like Pokemon. Uh, but, um, yeah, the Mega Man Battle Network series I mentioned in the last video because I have the second one as well. I got this one for really cheap. That's why I have it. That's why I randomly have 2 and 6. Um, at some point, I'll give the series a try and see if it's to my liking. Here's uh, Namco Museum. This was one of my earliest GBA games. This contains, I want to say, Ms. Pac-Man, Galaga, Pole Position, and Galaxian, and Dig Dug 2, I think. I think it's five games. And, um, yeah, pretty good for GBA versions of those games. Um, one downside with Pac-Man is that, like, if you're going to see the whole screen, then everything's pretty small. But, I mean, it's still playable. Um, but, yeah, th I mean, they're good games. It, there's not really much of a reason to go back to this now when there's better compilations and better handheld ones now. But, um, yeah, I enjoyed having this this back in the day to have those games portable. Although, Pole Position, I never, never really, really liked that much. Pokemon Emerald. Um, this is one of the best Pokemon games of all time. It takes Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire and, um, you know, just makes them better in a lot of different ways and adds a lot of content. Um... And yeah, it's just really good. Like if if you like Pokemon at all, like you just have to play it. There's there's no way around it. Uh, and here is Pokemon Leaf Green. So I already have Pokemon Fire Red. The reason why I have this is because the only way to complete the Pokedex in Generation Three is to get Slowpoke and Slowbro from a Leaf Green because that's the only game in the entire generation where you can catch them. And so I just had to buy this because I wanted to complete the Pokedex, and I did. So cool. Uh, here is. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team. Now, I do really like the Mystery Dungeon games, or at least the Sheeran ones that I've played. I tried getting into this, and I just... It didn't really click with me, and it, it kind of lacked the things that I like about Mystery Dungeon games. Um, and yeah, it just didn't strike me as like something that was really worth my time, but maybe I'll give it another shot. It just got a remake on the Switch, so that's pretty cool. Maybe I'll try the remake someday, but we'll see. I don't have it at this point. Uh, here's uh, Pokemon Pinball Ruby and Sapphire. Uh, I haven't played Pokemon Pinball 1 or 2 very much, but yeah, they're cool, cool concepts. Basically, you play pinball and try to play well and try to catch Pokemon. 
And um, I'll, I'll, at some point, I'll sit down with them a little more. Really ought to do that. Here is Clue, Battleship, and Risk. Um, this is another one I got. Actually, this might have also been one of the mystery games. I might be thinking of one, thinking that one is a mystery game where really I got it in a lot somewhere else. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I mean, three classic games, like board games, that are on one cart. And I don't know if there's really any reason to play this now. But, you know, I randomly have it. And, you know, I like Battleship and Clue. I don't, I'm don't. i not a huge fan of Risk, I'm, I'll be honest. Uh, here is... Sigma Star Saga. I think this is like a really... I got this when GameStop was like liquidating their GBA games. I got it for like nothing. Um, this is apparently a really cool game. I think it's kind of... I want to say it's like a varied action game and I th with like some RPG elements. I think it has like top-down action and like some shoot 'em up levels and stuff. Um, but like it has a story and everything too. Um, so it seems like a cool game. I just haven't played it a lot. At some point, I definitely plan to. This is one that is on my list. Here is... A trio of games, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Let me get them all here. We got Sonic Advance 1, 2, and 3. I remember when these came out, like, it was kind of a big deal because, like, Sega games on a Nintendo system? That's crazy. Um, but, yeah, they, you know, they're 2D Sonic, but it's not just, like, taking the Genesis sprites. They really, like, um, you know, completely new sprites and stuff, and you can play as different characters that all have different abilities and stuff. I'm going to be honest, though, for some weird reason, I've just never sat down to play these games. And I will. I definitely do. I definitely do plan to because I like Sonic a lot. And I like 2D Sonic. Um, and uh, I'm kind of waiting actually for the analog pocket to come out at some point this year or next year. And I'm hoping that that will be like the definitive GBA experience uh, because it'll be compatible with GBA games. And, you know, we'll see. Um, here is classic NES series Super Mario Brothers. Um, it's Super Mario Brothers. Not much else to say about it. Uh, Super Mario Bros. is obviously a great game. I got this, like, with something else. Like, one of the GBAs that I bought came with it. That's the only reason I really I have it. Oh, one thing you'll notice, I think I guess I'll point out, um, is that you, you might not have noticed it at first glance because it's not super noticeable, but this cartridge is a different shade of gray than regular GBA because it's colored to have the same color as an NES cartridge because this is an NES game. And if you get it like a... So the, the Mario Brothers 2 for Famicom Disk System that I showed you before is... Um, actually colored yellow because Famicom Disk System games were colored yellow. Fun fact, the more you know. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Link to the Past Four Swords, I already talked about. This is actually an additional copy. I found it for cheap, and I figured I'd get it because, like, you need multiple copies to play Four Swords. We are almost done here. Here's one I just, just recently got. It's Wade Hickston's Counterpunch. And this is a cool game because this is a lot like Punch-Out. It's very similar gameplay where, like, um, it's boxing, and, like, you're trying to memorize their patterns and dodge and hit them and stuff. And um, seems like a pretty cool game, and I will check it out at some point. I just recently got it. Uh, I never knew about it back in the day. I haven't actually known about that game for very long. Here is Yugdra Union Will Never Fight Alone. And this is a one of those strategy RPGs from Atlas. Um, this one seems pretty different, but I can't really describe it to you because I've only ever played like the opening battle. Um, and this one got a remake on the PSP, which I will get to in a future episode. And then last... But, uh, not least, here is uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! The... <coughs> Sorry. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! The Eternal Duelist Soul. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a popular trading card game. And um, this is apparently a pretty... There's a many, many Yu-Gi-Oh! video games. And this is apparently a pretty good one. And this is the only one of those Yu-Gi-Oh! games that I've really played. Um, and really, the only Yu-Gi-Oh! I've really played at all. I, I've never like actually played the card game. I used to like the show a lot when it was brand new. And, um, yeah, this one kind of got my curious itch to, like, actually play the card game out of the way. And um, it's fun. One thing you can do is you can look up real Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and all those real Yu-Gi-Oh cards, at least made bef before this game came out, have a code on there. And you type the code in the game, and you get the card. So, like, you could really build a re very powerful deck in a very short time if you do that. And I did that. Uh, one flaw that I see with Yu-Gi-Oh as a card game in general is that... Um, there seems to be very few viable decks, at least in this particular one, in this particular era of the game. It's like, it just seems like a lot of the cards are just strictly better than other cards, and you just build a deck with, like, the 30 or so best cards that there are, and you're pretty much all set. Like, there's not really much, like, counterplay. There's not, like, a rock, paper, scissors thing where one deck beats this deck beats this deck. 
from my experience only, maybe I'm wrong, but from my experience playing this game, pretty much you just build the optimal deck and you win. And it was still fun to play, but, like, I definitely respect this less than, like, Magic the Gathering and, like, even the Pokemon trading card game. Like, there are... I felt like there are better card games out there. Now, I know, obviously, many, 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 many expansions of Yu-Gi-Oh! have come out since this game was made, so the, the card game has probably evolved and improved since... Um, but it was still, yeah, you know, a pretty decent game. And, uh, yeah, that looks like it. I'm surprised at how fast I got through Game Boy Advance. I thought, like, this would take, like, two half-hour episodes, but it looks like I'm done in, like... Well, not that much less, actually. It's 55, 55 minutes, I think, total between two GBA videos. But anyway, next video, GameCube. Stay tuned. I'm Samurai Sam. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day.